And it's almost like if we preach the gospel today, it will offend too many people. So we will curb the gospel and we'll just code it the best we can and deliver it as good advice. You see, folks, sound doctrine is correct teaching. It's in keeping with that of the apostles. It's the teaching called sound, not only because it builds up in the faith, but because it protects against the corrupting influence of false teachers. And that's exactly what we have in our world today. Soundness of doctrine, faith, and how we talk are all basic concerns in Paul's writings for the church and the leadership of the church. That we speak and that we talk in sound doctrine. Now, I want to establish here a standard of sound doctrine that maybe you've never heard of before. We don't have this in the 16 fundamental truths of our doctrine of the assemblies of God. I'm not sure that any church has the doctrine that I'm just about to propose for us this morning. And that is this, the doctrine of fainting. The doctrine of fainting. I would propose to you and I that the concept of fainting is an actual spiritual scriptural doctrine. <laughs> Turn to it. Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 18. I would propose to us that this is an actual doctrine. Luke chapter 18, beginning verse 1 again. I've referenced this scripture the last few weeks, but now I want to expound on it a little bit more before I'm done here this morning. Chapter 18, verse 1, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Now, I'm going to explain what all that means here in just a moment. But I believe that that is a doctrine, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Now, listen to this. Christian people think because they're busy. Christian people think because we're busy. Now, understand, I'm not, I'm not instructing us to begin something new, to stop something old, to start a whole new thing, to become a whole, not, and I'm not being critical or criticizing it by any means. Not that at all. Because, but let me, let me emphasize this understanding so we understand this doctrine. We think preachers, preachers can be as busy, you know, they travel the world. Some evangelists the other day, Heard somebody complaining, uh, uh, Brother Noel, I think his name is, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, he's claiming that he's already uh, owns three or four jets, and now, he's, now he wants to buy a $53 million jet so he can travel around the world and preach the gospel and do all that kind of stuff. He's extremely wealthy, and that's awesome. That's awesome. He's got a lot of gold. He brags about how wealthy he is. And he brags about how that God doesn't want us to be poor. He wants us to be wealthy. Well, I think that's great. To whomsoever. But my point might be in six. Okay, now all that wealth and all those jets isn't going to take him to heaven. <laughs> okay, and all that gold and all that silver is going to stay right here when he goes to heaven. Okay. So, so whatever, do whatever. But we think as Christian people, because, we're, because we live busy lives, that we're not thankful. That, that because I go to meeting and have meeting after meeting, and I'm busy doing this and busy doing that, and and occupied and all, you know, all this stuff that consumes my time. We even talked about it this morning in Sunday school. The Lord said, we've been so busy, we need to get away for a while. We haven't even had time to eat. We've been so busy. We need to get away, get by ourselves, sit down and eat, talk, discuss, talk about things, pray for a little while. We've just been too busy. And if we don't stop and take time, we're going to faint. You see, men ought always to pray and not faint. So that we think that our busy lives in, because I'm a Christian, and I've been a Christian my whole life, that I'm not fainting. And the reality is, as a Christian, as a pastor, I can be a walking zombie. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a great Christian. Man, I am a great Christian. Okay? 
I'm a great individual. And you're a great Christian. And you listen to me. You're a great Christian and great person. And you're awesome. But if we're not always praying, then we have fainted. So we walk around. Again, this is not being critical. We walk around as Christian zombies. Again, that's not negative of being critical. It's deception. It's thinking that everything's okay because I'm busy and I'm a Christian. It's thinking that I'm supposed, I'm exactly doing that I'm fruitful in the life that I live because I'm so busy and I'm working and I go to church and we go to church and we pay our tithes and we do these type of things and aren't we wonderful people? And the reality is, folks, we can be all of those things and still be faithful. Men are always to pray and not faint. So here's what I propose to us. I want to go back to Gideon as an example. Now I know the Lord says that if you're going to pray, get in your prayer closet, shut the door behind you. Those who pray in secret, Father sees the secret, will reward the opening. Absolutely. And there's a time and a season for that. And that, that doesn't mean that every day we're all supposed to get along with God for one hour and close the door and separate ourselves. Actually, the Lord was in reference in that scripture to those who stood on the street corners and, and chanted great prayers and, you know, so that everybody could hear how spiritual they were. And the Lord said they have their reward. They're not going to get to heaven any further than they can jump. They have their reward. So let me tell you how you really should pray. Not like these guys, but this is how you should pray. Get in your prayer closet and so forth. Okay. Well, your prayer closet doesn't have to be an actual closet in your bedroom. Prayer closet can be in the car while you're driving down the road. Your prayer closet can be while you're making food. Prayer closet can be while you're going to the bathroom. Prayer closet can be while you're taking a shower. Prayer closet can be while you're being busy doing something that you don't need to really focus on anything else. i gotta, I got to tell you something. The only time I don't really, I'm not engaged in prayer or engaged in the thoughts of God and, 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 and all that, that, that I'm supposed to be about is when I'm golfing. And one of the reasons I go golfing is so I can take a break. I mean, it's scriptural. God said here in the story we read this morning, he told his disciples, let's go golfing. <laughs> <laughs> let's go get some meat, Chuck Bear, and let's go play some golf because we need to get away from these people and we need to relax and clear our minds for a little while because if we don't, we're going to faint. Now, folks, I'm being somewhat facetious, but I'm really not. I believe I'm preaching a doctrine to us here this morning as seasoned Christian people that we can be, we can be super awesome people and still be faithful. And men are always to pray and not faint. So when I go to bed, my wife asked me last night, she said, she said, do you have a title for this sermon? Well, I'm not sure. I'm working on over. And then she asked me again when we went to bed. She goes, do you have a title for your sermon? And I said, I don't know. I said, I'll figure it out tonight while I'm sleeping. Because <laughs> that's how I do it. I'll figure it out while I'm sleeping. So I wake up at 2.30 in the morning. The Holy Spirit's moving on me because I've been praying in my subconscious. So I go in and I say, I'm and, I, and I spend time with God and I do, the, I do whatever I'm going to do. And, and I communicate with God. Men are always to pray and not faint. So what I'm proposing to us, folks, we have a mission impossible in front of us. No man, nobody in this community is going to come to salvation except you and I pray without ceasing. Except you and I cry out unto God. Let me just say this just for a second. Let me let you know how this is going to play out come time in the future. I'm always going to have a sermon prepared that I believe God has laid upon our hearts. But I'm also going to have a salvation sermon. And if I believe somebody is in here and, and I don't recognize them and I'm not sure what it, what's going on, then I may move from my sermon for you folks to a sermon of salvation and hope and so forth. So if I start preaching, you know, salvation and you, you know what I'm doing. I'm going to give this individual, these people, an opportunity to find Jesus Christ. Amen. And so while I'm preaching that message, what are you all doing? Praying. Absolutely. You all are praying for the conviction and the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. You see, folks, this is God's will. This is how God works. And, and he has predestined. Forget about predestination for the future. We are in the predestination. 
I have been predestined for this moment right now in this place. You have been predestined for this moment right now in this place. We have been predestined to hear the doctrine of fainting. And if we do not pray without ceasing all the day long as we go through our day, then we are fainted. And that won't get it done. Can you say amen? Yes. You see, I'm just about done. You see, folks, one of the things that really smacks me right up alongside the, right, right up alongside the face is that evil never faints. They just, they just re-strategize. Evil never faints. But yet we as Christian people, we're, we're so powerful, we're so blessed, and we're so rich, and, and, and we go through and we're so thankful for God and the whole time that I feel like that sometimes we're just walking zombies. Evil never faints. So then if evil never faints, folks, we must never faint. And I would propose to us that Every time we come to church, whether it's midweek, whether it's Sunday, whenever it is, what, expect God that God's going to do something. Expect God that God's going to speak. Expect that God's going to, some, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. And if we have to wait and delay like Gideon did, so be it. Then this is my advice to us. Then get after God even harder. Challenge God when? When? Now I know I tease this. And I say, you know, I can have faith for all of this, but the thing I struggle with the most is, okay, God, hurry up. You know what I'm saying? I struggle with the lack of God's, you know, I struggle with God's patience because I just don't have the patience of God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have his patience. So because of that, I'm saying, God, when? When? Read these thoughts. You know the thoughts and the intents of our heart? Then, Lord, read these thoughts. No man, you have created a mission impossible. No man can come unto the Son except you, Father, draw him. Okay, then I am the except. When you're going to draw on somebody in Jesus' name, Holy Father, send your spirit. Draw, even as you drew me, draw somebody to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He knows who they are. Maybe you know somebody. Witness, talk, share, do whatever that it takes. But without prayer, we have fainted. The doctrine of fainting. And I want to close with this. You see, folks, I believe, and then if you read through the rest of, of this story here, verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect, here we are again, which cry day and night. Okay, which cry day and night. Which cry day and night. So we can do that day and night. Folks, I even now, I look forward now more than ever to going to bed because I know when I'm going to go, when I go to bed and I try to go to sleep, I'm going to, me and God's going to have visitation. And I, and I can't wait. Everything is silent. Everything is dark. My wife is snoring. Or I mean, she's sound asleep and I'm just laying here and now it's just me and God. And I look forward to it. Years ago, I hated sleep. I couldn't sleep. I'd sleep four hours. I, had so many, I was so busy working. I remember Billy Graham. Billy Graham said, I think I've shared this with you. Maybe you heard it. Just before he died, just several months before he died, they asked Billy Graham, what would you do different if you had to do it all over again? And without hesitation, he said this. He said, I would preach a lot less and I'd pray a lot more. I would do a lot less work for God and I'd spend more time communicating and fellowshipping with God. And that's from Billy Graham. I look back on my life, he said, and, and I realized that I missed opportunities to grow just me with God. I was so busy working for God. And if I had to do it all over again, I'd be a lot less, I'd do a lot less talking, a lot more praying. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with this. You see, folks, prayer, prayer is the major part of the DNA code, DNA code of our spiritual lives. It's not Christianity. It's prayer. 
Man ought always to pray and not faint. That needs to be a doctrine. The doctrine of fainting. Okay? So prayer is a major, is a major component of our spiritual DNA. And what the devil has done today, it's very successful, is that he has erased and extracted that DNA from the life of the child of God. And it's kind of like this. It's like the devil today has stolen the genetic code in people's lives to work at a job for personal value. It, 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 people don't work, you know, this, this millennial generation, you know, those between 18 and 40, you know, they have no idea what it means. They don't want to work. Everything is supposed to be free. You know, we, get, we have, you know, communists, we have socialists that are saying, you know, free this, free food, free, free money, free schooling, free health, and free, and then we'll give you money if you have enough kids, we'll give you free money for that. And then we'll give you some housing, and oh, by the way, we'll give you enough money for food. Well, then why would anybody want to work? I got to tell you something. If they gave me free rent, free food, free gas, free, you know, everything is free. I'm not working. <laughs> and it's like the enemy has extracted the DNA code from the basic human need to be valuable in work. Saw so on the news last night, the attack on the white, straight male is accelerating more than ever before. In fact, it's to the point that if you're a white, straight male, not even a Christian white male, if you're a Christian, white, straight male, then you should, really should be shot. That race needs to be extinguished. It's to the point where we're supposed to apologize to everybody around us in the world because we are so privileged. The enemy has extracted the DNA from our culture, from people's lives, the need to find value in work. And so I fear that the devil has also extracted the DNA out of the church that Christian people ought always to pray and not faint. And I believe we have engaged ourselves into the doctrine of fainting. But I also believe that we can reverse that trend. I also believe that we can make up for lost time. I also believe that what God calls us to do, He is able for us to accomplish it to do. That what God said He would do, that He must do. Yeah, I don't have anything else... I, God won't allow me to be frustrated. Won't allow me to be discouraged. Won't allow me to be angry. Won't allow me to be mad. Won't allow me to be depressed. Won't allow me to be disappointed. So the only thing I got left is what He said He'll do. Amen. So then, God, then I'm saying, when you're going to do what you said you'd do, <laughs> and help my impatience because I don't have your patience. So just help me to be strong, even in this moment. Can you say Amen? Yeah.